This video series is brought to you by Skillshare. Get free access to Skillshare for two whole months to over thousands of classes using the link in the description. Do it. Welcome guys to the sixth, I think it's the sixth part. Yeah, sixth part of this tutorial series where we're gonna be covering how to make a landscape from start to finish. In the last video, we covered how to add details to your images on your own, you know, with the custom brushes that you have, not using any sort of images or anything like that. But in this video, we're going to be covering how to add details with photo textures and how you can apply them into your images. Now, if you're going to get into this part of the process, I'd assume we've already covered all the previous parts leading up to this point. I personally don't recommend you get into photo textures right away. I recommend you first figure everything out before you start adding textures because I don't know, it's just not the best workflow and a lot of times it does look fake so I recommend you first add details on your own and then you can work your way up to adding details with photo textures and stuff like that so today we're gonna be covering that and how you're able to add photo textures to your images artfully not just straight up copy and pasting it how to add it in a subtle way as you can see here I've put off texture references on the tabs here in Photoshop so that I can just copy and then paste it right into the illustration here are textures of mountains and rocks here I've got I don't know like a floor texture um and yeah, photos of statues. I'm probably gonna add it into the statue so it looks a little bit more realistic. I do recommend that you get into photo textures because the details in the real world, it just nothing beats it, to be honest. If it's used properly, photo textures can be an amazing tool for you. So I recommend that you get into it, know how to use it, try to integrate it, integrate it, not, you know, just straight up adding it, which makes everything cohesive and natural looking. So yeah, here I have a couple of references for sky. We're probably gonna get into the sky first and then work our way up to adding in textures but what I'm gonna do first here because I really like this sky so what I'm gonna do with this rectangle selection probably gonna select the sky I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go back to my illustration and I'm probably just gonna paste the sky on top there just paste it and I'm just gonna try to scale it as best as I can hold on I'm gonna stretch it since the shape of clouds are organic uh, we can just pretty much warp it around and it won't like look unnatural but something like that is cool I'm probably gonna warp this. Now, one problem with adding photos is it messes with your values. Try to retouch the values of the photos and I'm probably going to copy this guy and I'm gonna add it. The further things get, the squishier they are. So I want like a couple clouds that are, you know, in the distance. You know what? I actually prefer it the other way around. I'm probably gonna bring this all the way to the bottom because I really do like this as a bottom sky and I'm probably gonna squish it. I probably shouldn't stretch it too much because it's starting to look a little bit unnatural, but I'm gonna warp this and with the eraser, what you wanna do is gently erase the harsh cut. And uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna take the other sky, but the top part, not the bottom, because I do like this dark color happening here. Let's see how this works. I'm not exactly sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna paste that. And we'll just see if it works. If it doesn't, then I will just remove it. Maybe a little too dark. Uh, probably let's just reduce the opacity to see how that works. Yep, I think that's a little better. And just going to softly. And then I'm going to go to the previous one. And I'm probably going to reduce the opacity as well. Since I have a lot more options for skies, I'm probably going to add a couple more, see which one works. I've got this one. See where other options might work. What I'm going to do uh, is reduce the opacity a little bit and then just erase away. I think something like that would be good. And just add your own spin to the entire thing. And since both images are not completely the same, make sure they're the same aesthetic in terms of highlights, color, and stuff like that. Both images are pretty different in terms of color. So I'm just trying to color pick some colors from this image and then adding it to this image and vice versa. And I think that's a good one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge all three. So we've got one sky and then maybe with the, yeah, maybe I'll merge the cloud as well. So we've got one entire sky. Okay, that's one way to add photo textures. Up to this point, we've organized every single plane. Every single one has its own layer. So it's easy for us to now start adding textures and stuff like that. So up to this point, I recommend you organize every single part of the, your landscape. So it's easier to do that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm probably gonna work on, I don't know, let's say this rocky texture here. What I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go to my, uh, here, this one, for example, I'm gonna go to the the lasso tool just select this copy it i'm gonna go to my landscape one way to do it command select the layer i'm gonna make a group and then i'm gonna mask 
that group. So once we've done that, now what we can do is control V and then paste the texture and everything will be inside that layer. That is one way to do it. In just a second, I'll teach you guys another way. Now, one obvious problem with this is that the values are not correct. So one way to fix it is just to, first of all, unhide your values layer. And then with this, just try to, you know, match the value until you're not able to see it anymore see that's too dark see, something like that is good like, i'm not able to see it anymore and then just unlock it and then what we want to do is mask that click the mask layer fill it in with black and then with white softly start adding the texture in something like that and then now we've got texture another way to mask in your layers of texture rather than doing the whole group thing which might be a little complicated is to actually go to the actual layer just paste it press alt click the layer between both of them and then now it's in the actual layer now that's one way to do it personally i don't recommend it because it's way more messy it's easier just to have a whole group and then every single texture that you add will be underneath that group personally i feel like that's a better way to do it you can do it both ways it really doesn't matter but just so you have more options all right so here for example you just paste it and then it's pretty much inside the group already so you don't have to do the alt thing every single time so i'm just going to add this texture in here work on the value Values. something like that is good and then just make a mask fill it in with black and then with white slowly start adding details to the entire thing and I'm gonna do it one more time select let's say on this here paste it and you rotate it something like that maybe mask that fill it in with black oh sorry I forgot to work on the values darken it a little bit something like that we'll go back to the mask fill it in with black <laughs> and then slowly add the details another way to do it is just copy in it and then just paste it underneath and then just continue And mainly what you're looking here is uh, just for pretty much happy accidents, okay? Just uh, work your way around it until you kind of find details that you yourself wouldn't think of. Uh, that's sort of uh, what we're looking for here. And once you've established the textures that you want, what you want to do is just merge all the layers. So we've got all the texture in one layer. So what I'm going to do is actually, first of all, I'm going to actually duplicate the layer. Duplicate the layer. I'm going to hide it for now. But what I want to do is actually I'm going to mush it on the furthest parts because the further things are from us, the squishier and smaller they get. So I want to kind of add that illusion of scale. And I'm going to unhide this actually. And then I'm going to bring it back. And there we go something like that all right for now i'm probably just gonna leave it i'll definitely work on it a little bit more later but that's about the basic gist of it i'm probably gonna do the rest on my own okay but that's how to add textures but what i'm gonna do now is in time lapse i'm gonna try to finish this as much as possible because it's probably the most time consuming time consuming time consuming it's a really fun process i really love it to be honest this is actually one of my favorite process other than adding lights and stuff like that but photo texturing you can go wild with it obviously this is a very powerful tool you want to respect it as much as possible try have fun with it which is probably the most important part anyway i'm gonna go right into it and then right after i finish i will explain to you guys what i've done
All right, believe it or not, I spent roughly five hours adding all the textures. That's about it for, you know, the photo texturing. Hopefully it was easy to understand. Okay, once you understand how it works, I feel like it's pretty easy to do your own thing, okay? You don't have to like follow the way that I'm doing it. Trust me, it's pretty easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's not, it's not rocket science. It obviously takes a lot of practice and stuff like that to properly get it. The more you practice, the better you get at it. I'm not saying I'm the best at it. I've seen way better people use photo textures way better than I have. One thing that I wanted to do, obviously, was to add a lot of depth in the image so one thing that you want to do to add a sense of depth and scale is everything that's in the background scale it down like shrink it so the details are more compressed that gives you a sense of perspective and scale another thing you want to do i'll probably do this more after but what i want to do is um try to separate each plane with some sort of fog or something like in between like it really depends on how you want to make your own background but personally whenever i make different planes i always like to separate them with some sort of fog or some sort of smoke in between each of them so that it you know gives a sense of separation and it's also a cool effect personally so in every of my landscapes i always add it uh, you don't have to if you don't want to uh one thing you might have i've noticed that we didn't go into the highlights or the lighting or anything like that adding lighting and highlights just brings everything to life in the next video we're going to focus on lighting and choosing your light source uh where exactly in the image you want to put your lighting that's in the next video uh, i'll show you the method that a lot of concept artists use on how to add highlights and lighting and different layer modes that you can use for highlights and stuff like that so i encourage you guys to stick around yeah and i'll see you guys in the next video